I'm going to talk about the so-called machine formulas for standard deviation and variance. These are the ones offered in your textbook. This goes towards the computation of Pearson's R, which is really the, um, the covariance divided by the standard deviation on X multiplied by the standard deviation on Y. Now, I just want to be able to compute one of these. And if we know this, if we know the formula for standard deviation on x, we just change x to y, and we'll have the standard deviation on y. The one I give, and the one that was in chapter two of the book, was the standard deviation, which was given as the sum of the squares. If you recall, it's the x, the ith data point, subtract the mean, all squared. And this is divided by the data. This should be mu, right? This, the population mean is mu, and there's of course mu of x, and of course there's mu of y. For this particular thing, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get rid of this variable anyway. We have what is a perfect square which we can expand. So we have summation of x squared, the data squared, minus 2x bar x plus bar x all squared, all divided by n. We can now distribute the summation uh, across, like if we have summation of a plus b plus c, well this is equal to the summation of the a terms plus the summation of the b terms plus the summation of the c terms. Meaning if we had a whole bunch of a's, b's, and c's to add, and we had to add, add those together, then basically we are adding it's the same thing as adding the individual a, b, and c terms and then adding the result together. For example, if I had 2, 5, 8, and that was my a, my b, and my c, and I had 3, 5, 2, and 2, 7, 1, let's say, this is, this is going to be a1, a2, a3, right? This would be b1, b2, b3. This will be c1, c2, c3. What if I had to add them? Using this formula, I'm being told, add 2, 5, and 8. Well, 2 and 5 is 7, and 8 is 15. 3 and 5 is 8, and 2 is 10. 2 and 7 is 9, and 1 is 10. 15 and 10 and 10 is 35. Well, what if I did it this way? Add only the A's, add only the B's, add only the C's, and then add the result. Would I still get 35? Well, I should, right? Um, so 2 and 3 is 5, and, and 2 is 7, 5 and 5 is 10, and 7 is, um, 7 is 17, 8 and 2 is 10, and 1 is 11. 7 and 17 is 24, 24 plus 11 is 35. So it adds both ways. So this is suggesting that I add it this way. This is suggesting that I add it this way, and then that way. <laughs> okay, so that's really... That's really uh, what's at stake here. So I can, using this algebra, breaking up the summation, I can break up this summation. So then I have sum of xi squared, the sum of the squares of my data, not, the, not this sum of squares, but the sum of my data squared, minus two, bar x is a constant, we can take it out of the summation, and this is still the sum of xi, notice that we have xi here, uh, plus the sum of bar x squared all over n. Oh, by the way, this is supposed to be not the standard deviation, but the variance, right? Because we don't have a square root. So I took out the bar x out of the summation here. I could have said summation 2x bar x, but because 2 is a constant and bar x is a constant, it's like I said 
you know, 6 plus 9 plus 12. This is really 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 4. Well, I can take that out and, and say um, 3 times 2 plus 3 plus 4. In other words, add 2, 3, and 4, and then multiply the result by 3. So 2 and 3 is 5, and 4 is 9, and 3 9s are 27. Well, if I would have done 6 and 9 in the first place, I would have had 15 and 12, which is also 27. And of course, this would also add up to 27 down here. This here, the sum of x squared, is really, um, if, we, if we just think about what bar x is, bar x is really the sum of the data divided by n, right? So, and if we're squaring this, then we have to square this, right? So that's what we're going to do here to this one. So then we, as a result, have sum of xi squared minus 2 bar x. If we have bar x equals sum of x over n, then the sum of x is equal to n bar x, right? These are the same. I can, I can actually use this. I mean, this what I had here before was correct. But the thinking I prefer to use is this one. But I shouldn't be squaring both sides. Just leave them as they are. And so uh, instead of squaring, I'll just uh, show you the equation. It's the sum of your data divided by n, the size of your data. And so if we bring n over to this side, we have n times the average equals the sum of x. Now, of course, this occurs n times 2. Even the squares occur n times. So this is really nothing more than n bar x all squared. Divide the whole thing by n, like before. Let's break this up. So now we have bar xi squared over n minus, oh, sorry. I forgot this. 2 I forgot the sum of my data. Sum of my data. Okay. So 2 bar x sum of xi over n minus, uh, plus, sorry, n bar x squared over n because everything is divided by n. And notice that we have a cancellation. Um, <coughs> also, this here bar x, the uh, sum of xi over n, is, isn't that just bar x? Isn't that just the average? The sum of all your data m divided by the size of your data? Sure, that's another bar x. So here we have sum of x um, i squared over n minus 2 bar x all squared. So it's just bar x times another bar x, which is kind of interesting plus bar x squared. And notice now we can do a subtraction. Uh, negative 2 bar x squared plus bar x squared. Well, that's just bar x, isn't it? So, uh, sorry, bar x squared without the 2. So here we have uh, sum of x squared over n minus, minus just bar x squared. And, um, of course, we can use this. Now, now it's safe to say if, if we have bar x equals sum of x over n, then if we square the thing, then we can square this thing. Okay? So then, uh, in the next step, we have equals, equals sum of x i squared over n, the sum of your data. Basically, an average is not really the average squared because n is not squared. And now we find a common denominator. So we're going from here. We have the sum of our data squared divided by n and we subtract the x squared and that's because of the result of this. So uh, sum of x squared is like bar x squared equals uh, sum of x divided by n. But if we square this side, we square this side. Sorry, I don't want to interfere with the other numbers here. So, it's the sum of x squared over n squared, and now we're finding a common denominator, and that means that we got to 
multiply this by n over n and then the denominators are fine. Let's just work across. So then we end up with n sum of xi squared over n over n squared and then we're subtracting because everything is now over n squared the sum of xi squared. Notice that this is the sum of the squares of the data points themselves and this is the square of the sum. <laughs> okay, you take your data points, add them all up, and then square the result. These two will be different numbers. Okay, okay, so now, so as a result, we're saying that basically the uh, variance, the variance on x is equal to n times the sum of the data. Let's leave out the i, the i subscript. n times the sum of your data minus the square of the sum of your data. The standard deviation then on x is really uh, the square root of that whole thing. So it's n sum of x squared, sorry, x squared minus sum of x the square of the sum divided by n squared. So that's the standard deviation on x and we can also make with the standard deviation on y. I forgot to multiply that first sum by n. So we have n sum of y squared minus sum of y all squared the sum of the squares minus the square of the sum over n squared. So here we're going to talk about the covariance, which we, uh, instead of using just an x or just a y in the subscript, we have both x and y here. And this is often given as the summation of the variation on x times the variation on y. No, oh, sorry, y minus bar y. And notice nothing is squared here, um, but it's called the covariance rather than the co-standard deviation. And to be honest with you, I've never seen it squared, so we can take the square out of there. It's divided by n. And so um, to turn this into the so-called machine formulas, we can derive we can derive the machine formulas by expanding this set of factors. So this is like saying the sum of x times y using FOIL minus bar x y minus x bar y plus bar x bar y. So it's the sum of all that, all divided by n. Let's break up the sum the way we did in this step over here, using the sensibility that the sum of a, b, and c added together is the separate sums of the sets of numbers a, b, and c. We then end up with sum of x, y minus bar x is a constant, sum of y minus bar y is a constant, sum of x plus, if you remember, the sum of bar x bar y is just like saying the um, bar x bar y multiplied n times because bar x and bar y is a constant anyway. And this is all divided by n. Okay. So then we can now break up the summation. This is sum x, y over n minus bar x sum of y over n minus bar y sum of x over n plus n bar x bar y over n. So call this bar y. And we can call this bar x. In fact, something might be made of this. So sum of xy over n 
minus bar x bar y minus bar x bar y because this is going to be bar x plus the ends cancel and we just have bar x bar y really if you see this this is just that just goes away and all we got left is this bar x is really the sum of your data divided by n we bring it back to that and we'll just do it right here so this is equal to sum of x y over n minus sum of x over n times sum of y over n that's our bar x bar y and remember we got rid of these so we don't need to worry about them anymore and notice that this is now over n squared so if we just go across here sum of x y over n minus sum of x sum of y over n times n which is n squared now we need to work with a common denominator n sum of x y minus sum of x sum of y all over n squared and this is now the um, the covariance on x y okay it's the covariance on x y and if you recall this is in contrast to the way you would do it by hand which is the x minus bar x times y minus bar y and this remember is just a number it's just one number at the end and this is divided by n a calculator or a computer would do it this way using less memory this actually takes less memory for a computer to do whereas for a human Dividing one number times one other number is usually the easier thing, but it turns out that this takes a bigger table. So in summary, we have here the variance on um, x being uh, n sum of x squared minus sum of x all squared, the sum of the n times the sum of the squares minus the square of the sums divided by n squared which was equal to what we had this would be sum of xi minus bar x all squared the sum of the squares divided by the data these are the ways we were doing it and of course we can also have the one for y and this is just the sigma squared on y and of course you would get a similar uh, formula here except all the x's would be replaced with y's. Let's say we have some data x1, x2, x3, x4. We'll make these into friendly numbers. These are not going to be very difficult numbers. And this is just xi for this column. So let's say we have 3, 9, 2, 8. Okay, so let's just say those are our numbers. And here is the sum of xi, right, when we add up these numbers. So 3 and 9 is 12. 12 and 2 is 14, and 14 and 8 make 22. So the sum, the sum of our data is 22. Now, if we square that number, we're, we're doing this, right? And that's really the sum of the square of the sum. We would have to compute 22. It's a number greater than 400, but I just want to make sure I get this right. For, uh, 22 squared. And I get 484. So the sum of xi squared is 484. Okay. So what about this? What about the sum of the squares? That's where we get xi squared. That means we take our data and we square it in this column. 3 squared is 9. 9 squared is 81. 2 squared is 4. 8 squared is 64. And then we add those together. We got 10 and we got 8, which make 18. We carry the 1. 1 and 8 is 9. 9 and 6 is 15. And you can see this number, the sum of the squares, is different from the square of the sum.
We have a problem here that a farmer wants to determine whether there is a relationship between the mean temperature during the growing season and the size of his wheat crop. So he assembles the following data for the last six harvests. So uh, the mean temperature is 4, so his yield in tons per hectare is 1.6 and so on. So he would record the mean temperature and the yield in tons per hectare of farm area and he would have like six data points. Now as I said you need 20 for a scientific sample but usually for the purpose of problem solving and in the interest of keeping the problem short uh, they usually give maybe five or six data maybe not definitely not more than 10 data. In their solution they make use of the so-called lazy formula or the so-called machine formulas and notice how we have basically a situation where uh, you have five columns your temperature your yield just like up here basically they copied these values down and they call the temperature x and x squared is recorded here so basically this num this column is really this column squared and then we have y squared and that's this column squared to make this column then you have xy, which is just this column times this column to make this column. That's all it is. And then you find out all the sums. You just add them all. You just find all the sums, and then you plug it in. Then you plug it into the uh, formulas that we, um, the formulas that we talked about earlier, including the covariance formula, which would be these. The way we did it in uh, the notes was okay so I copied the table too. I copied basically the temperature and the yield in tons per hectare. I had to find the sum of the column, the sum of each column for x and y and then find the average and I needed to do that before I moved on because after that we needed x minus bar x. Well I wouldn't, if I hadn't known bar x I wouldn't be able to do this column so I got 4 subtract 8 and we get minus 4. 8 subtract 8 we get 0. 10 subtract 8 we get 2 and so on. We just get that whole column. We don't have to add this part up until we find the sum of the squares. So basically once we have this column made we square each number to get this this quantity. Negative 4 squared makes positive 16. So notice we're getting rid of our minus signs. Adding this up isn't too exciting because you'll get a number either zero or close to zero if you recall. But if we square the numbers we get rid of the minus sign. So zero squared is zero, two squared is four, one squared is one, three squared is nine, negative two squared is four. If we add up all this we get 34. Okay. We found bar y and we take y minus bar y and we get this column here. In very much the same way we got this column for x. Then we take this column and square it, and then you get 0.5950 as your sum of your column. So you keep that there, you keep that there, but then there's one more. There's that, there's that thing you need for the covariance, and that is you take this column and you multiply by this column, meaning negative 4 times negative 0.55 is 2.20. 0 times 0 0.25 is 0. 2 times negative 0.15 is negative 0.3 and, it, and you just go down the column. This time you don't square anything and you generally tend to get a, a number that is not zero and in this case we got 2.10. So with these sums you take this sum, you divide by n and you get your standard deviation, sorry not your standard deviation on x, your variance on x. You take the square root for the standard deviation and similarly you take this sum you divide by n and that's your variance on y for that sum of squares and for this, this last column, you take this and divide by n and you get your covariance. This divided by the square root of this times the square root of this and yes. Okay, so I end up with 0.4669 which according to Pearson's R is a moderate positive correlation.